Okay. You can sp you can speak as I'm talking if you want to. It's up mm -hmm. to you. But okay. Actually, you know, I, you know, for for an advanced spiritual student who's who's undergoing extreme difficulty, mm -hmm. you know, um, certain things have really helped me that Hawkins has said. Mm -hmm. Um, sometimes, like, you're, you're a seasoned spiritual seeker and you know how to cancel beliefs, you know how to go to the observer, you know how to feel feelings. I mean, you're, you're fully aware of everything you need to do and still you're going through a hard time. Mm -hmm. And still it's like, you know, things, it's like everything is going, you know, like everything is going wrong and you're being battered left, right and centre. And <laughs> even... And, uh, and, yeah, yeah. I'm being beaten up, yeah, no. honestly. Yeah. yeah. And you think, well, you know, I know how to do the observer, I know how to I know how to cancel, I know how to transcend, and I've been in these sublime states, and yet life is really, really rough and I'm being beaten up non-stop. Mm -hmm. And I'm doing everything and I'm still being beaten up. Yeah, sort of like that thing. And the thing that Hawkins um, you know, a few things that Hawkins said really, really helped to recontextualize, to help me to yeah. see it with a, a, a See, see the situation differently, even when like lots and lots of chaos is hitting you as an advanced spiritual student. Yes. One of the things is that as you do spiritual work and your level of consciousness increases, uh, you now get eligible to clear karma which you were not eligible to clear before. Uh, so you're now at uh, it's like, you know, you had like, you had a lot of this. I'm going to do this. This is not my usual spiel, but I have to say for the, this is for the advanced spiritual students who, 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 um, who it puts off the new spiritual students, but for advanced spiritual students, this, this is videos for advanced spiritual students. So you're fully aware of all the stuff and you're very good at doing all the stuff and yet you're being battered. And it's like you clear stuff and you transcend stuff and you go to a new level of consciousness and you usually have like this space where you've mm -hmm. cleared something really really heavy mm -hmm. and then you go and you have a short reprieve yes. of bliss and peace and oneness yes. and love <laughs> and everything flowing yes. and the squirrels are chirping and it's just wonderful <laughs> and then suddenly and then suddenly it's like you're hit by a battering ram yes. and like everything every, it's like the whole world <laughs> erupts like a volcano yes, yeah. and you're being hit non-stop <laughs> yes. and uh, that is because you know it's like you clear a heavy chunk of karma and then you you transcend for a period of time and you're in the states of infinite bliss and grace and then it's like but now you're at that new level of consciousness mm -hmm. you now have the power to handle some very heavy karma which you were not eligible to handle before and so this deeper karma, remember on average, I think you know from Hawkins my guess is on average a dedicated spiritual student has 15 to 20 lifetimes worth of living. Uh, and so when you're, when, you're, when you're devoted to like enlightenment work, you clear karma in one life, you can clear up to 15 lifetimes of karma in one lifetime. So people who are not interested in doing spiritual work are clearing very little in a lifetime and stay very stagnant. Mm. But if you've got like 15 lifetimes worth of baggage and you want to go enlightenment, you know, this lifetime, mm -hmm. then it's suddenly like, you know, I want to be free this lifetime, God. I, whatever like I've got. Yeah. Okay. So if you oh. say that kind of prayer, then it's <laughs> like, uh, like I want to be free ASAP, God. Yes. Then it's like. Freedom. So it's like yeah. that, that, that 15 mm -hmm. lifetimes worth of karma will start to be released on you because uh, your spiritual intent is freedom ASAP. Mm -hmm. Personal like, karma. Your personal karma uh, will right. be... And you, and, you, and you get hit left, right and centre as someone who wants to be free very, very quickly. So Hawk, what Hawkins said... So it, and then it made me feel like the tough times, you know, it's like you know, when you look at the saints, look at the lifetime of the saints, who've had very devoted lifetimes. I mean, they've, like, gone through the, they've gone through the mill. So he said, like, go to the Encyclopedia Britannica and read the lifetime of all the saints and see what type of lives they've had. They've had that extreme devotion to clear and to be of service. I'm not a saint, though. <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, last time I checked, I wasn't one. <laughs> no, no, okay. But even, even, no, but even for enlightenment, which is going even higher, you know, you're trying to transcend the world. So you just can clear your stuff, and they both have an equally high intent. So when I, when I get smashed around, and it seems like I'm being hit left, right, and center, I just say, well, that's great, that's good. Because I, I don't see it as I'm doing anything wrong, or I'm not on track. It just means I just cleared a huge tranche, and now I'm probably clearing, you know, I might be on lifetime 10. I might only have three lifetimes to clear in this lifetime if I'm going to get enlightened. So, so also remember, in past lives, um, and people who don't believe in past lives, there's lots of, uh, you know, you can do past life regression with the hypnotherapist, you can go to a kinesiologist, and you'll find out if, if you're in disbelief. But in the, in the distant past lives, it was barbaric. We were all barbaric. Mm. We were all barbaric. It's not like, you know, it's king you know every, everyone was barbaric <laughs> in those times. Fifteen lifetimes ago, you know, we were just clubbing each other to death. Yeah. You know, that was our <laughs> lifetime of clubbing each other to death. So you think you're a saint in this lifetime, yeah. but, you know, but, you know, when you get these nasty people that come out of nowhere mm. when you're practicing unconditional love, but you don't know what you did 15 lifetimes ago when you were in the uh, caveman. Yeah. Mm. So, okay, well, every day I'm trying to be nice and blessing everybody. And I've done that. And then this horrible person came out of nowhere and did this really, really horrible stuff. And I don't deserve that. Mm. I don't deserve that. I mean, I'm a nice person. Mm. So you don't know the context of your past lifetimes. Mm. So, so I go, okay. What, so I tell you my stuff. is like, okay, something... I'm trying to do, you know, I'm trying to be of love and service, I'm trying to be in the observer, um, blessing everyone every day, and like this, where did this person come from? You know, but oh no, that's, that's just a lifetime that I have to clear and transcend. And I always see these things as being perfect, even when I'm facing something difficult that seems to come out of nowhere, it's because I've risen in consciousness, I've got my break, and now I'm eligible to clear another aspect of a lifetime that, uh, that I can now handle. Mm -hmm. So I don't, so the, the suffering of it is less because I don't see it as unfair or I'm not on track. I am still on track for enlightenment, but I'm clearing very heavy stuff from past lifetimes. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I'm doing anything wrong or I'm out of favor with God, I'm out of favor with the universe. I don't see it. I see like everyone who does advanced spiritual work, you know, is gonna get the sublime moments of grace and oneness and then you get slapped around in the face and that's like you know that's lifetime I mean you know that might be lifetimes you know eight where I was a thug you know and you know and lifetime ten when I was a axe murderer you know so there's some heavy stuff can you so, live a lifetime within a lifetime what, 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 what sometimes in this lifetime yeah. it feels to me like I'm living within a lifetime it's almost like I was one person then. Mm. It's almost like another lifetime every decade or of every five years almost it feels like. Um, Does that make sense? Well, I mean, you're, I, mean, there, I mean, one thing is, like, if you go to the observer of all lifetimes, there is no lifetimes, mm. okay? So lifetimes is just, uh, is just an identified experience of separation, lifetime after lifetime of the personal ego believing in separate lifetimes. Mm. Um, the experience in a lifetime is your, your, your experiencing of what karma is unfolding, what you're hooking into. So, but within a lifetime, like I'm sure most advanced spiritual seekers will feel like they've met people before and there's certain lessons from other lifetimes that are, are being resolved for certain segments of life. I remember once, you know, it was like, and you can, you can sort of feel like, oh, this lifetime I'm meeting people I've had in another lifetime, yes. we're all getting together yeah. for, the, yeah. for, for, a, for a while, for us to, as a collective, for this period of time, to sort something out. I had, like I'm in a 12-step fellowship, and like two people asked me for help, and then I found that they were both working in the same company, and they both come from two different countries, and we both had, an, we all three of us had an interaction while these two people, I was helping them in this same company. And then they both went off to other countries again after this little collective thing happened. And I could easily intuit, okay, you know, uh, the divinity had orchestrated things to unfold so that something could be cleared with our collective group karma. 
and then you know it was cleared and then you move on to, you know so it's almost like the lifetimes is a divine grace everything is happening happening perfectly but i just wanted to say like mm -hmm. this is for the advanced because you know, you've done a lot of work you know how to do it you've had these amazing periods and then you get battered mm -hmm. and then you think you're doing something wrong or you mm -hmm. think God has abandoned me, mm. or you think it's unfair, you know, or maybe I've been punished, you know, maybe I've been doing everything wrong, but it's not. I don't see that. I just see that as clearing some karma, still on track, mm -hmm. and I have to just clear that, and then I'll get the next, I'll go up to the next power level. So I don't see it as a bad thing when you get, you know, you have a, a lot of turbulence, even as advanced, yeah. Yeah, I wonder sometimes, God, will I be able to survive this? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because it's so intense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I would but again, the thought comes, I won't give you anything that you can't, you know, it's in the mm. Bible, yeah. that you can't cope with. I said, one human being, with all his, everything, you know, all around me, then I said to myself, okay, maybe I, I'm able to cope. You, you want to be free. If anyone else wants yeah. to be free, you clear stuff at a very rapid rate. And you can be, I would, I would there is another trick. For anyone who's going through a very difficult time, uh, yeah, that was, I have to say that for the advanced people who then do a lot of work and then feel they've been battered every now and then. Uh, and, and, you know, like I remember Hawkins saying, you know, like, you know, Christ at the end and Buddha at the end. You know, Christ was very advanced when yeah, he got the temptation, the Luciferic temptation of power over the world. He was like already like spiritually very very high so just because you're high pardon? I'm not well, well at each <laughs> stage so if like if Jesus you know has already advanced is being like battered with Lucifer offering him dominion over the world and then Buddha right at the end felt like his bones were crushing and he was under demonic attack mm -hmm. and these guys are like spiritual giants so when I get slapped around by the world it doesn't mean I'm wrong or I've done something wrong mm -hmm. It, it can mean that I'm being tested at that level of consciousness. Yeah. Have you had the same experience? I've been having the experience that those trenches of karma, they come, they're strong as hell. Yeah. yeah. Uh, nowadays I don't panic as much. I go like, mm. this too shall pass. And I know that this, I just have to mm. go. And, and being so in holy company really helps. Yeah. Because everyone is in that path. Being in with others that are also in that path reminds me that it's just a journey. Mm -hmm. But do you experience that the, the serenity uh, uh, trenches, they, they are a little bit bigger? Like, uh, it, it becomes different. And yeah. I would just say it becomes different at, at high levels of consciousness in the way things are experienced with difficulties. Um, but I, you, you actually took, you, you just took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, for people, there is a trick. If you're an advanced spiritual seeker, and uh, you were say, you're going to say what I was going to say, but... I would go to groups with high spiritual energy and the, rather than be on your own. Like if you, if you know how to cancel, if you're able to, and you know there are certain group energies which have high vibrations and you're trying to do the spiritual work on your own, if you can lean on the consciousness level of the groups to help support you at that time, I would I recommend it. I mean, I, I haven't said this on camera, I think, but I go to 12-step groups every day. On average, like today, this is an extreme day. Like I've been to three 12-step meetings already. So three hours, I was in two, two this is normal for every Saturday. Two money, two money meetings, a food meeting, and I'm here for most of the evening. So I'm, I'm lending on the consciousness levels, these group support energy fields. You know, they are very, very, so, you know, I have my personal connection, but then, so these, they can, when you're feeling weak and you're being battered, you know, relying on these group energies can, can really help you with the grace of not That's being That's why I came, because every Saturday I want to come here. And I'm being, it's like demonic attacks, I would say. My body, I want, the symptoms will be so heavy. Yes. And today I said to myself, whatever, if I drop dead in the street, yeah. that's fine, but I'm coming. Seriously, for a long time, every time I need to come here, I'm being attacked. That happens when you're... Up here and, and physically, 
my mm. body, the symptoms would intensify, mm. and then emotionally I start, you know, the scenarios would start playing up in my mind. That, that, I also had that. When I was, in the beginning, when I'd do anything mm. that was frightening to my ego, I would flare up mm. with, yeah. with physical symptoms. Yes. And it's like, almost like the ego doesn't want you to mm. get the group support, no. and, it, and it will flare up. You know, I remember yeah. seeing, seeing yeah. one of my teachers of enlightenment for a one-to-one, -one, and I had a huge gout attack. Mm. It was like my whole body flared mm. because it didn't want me to get to that, to that place. Mm. So often the ego will, will fight very hard that you don't make it yeah. to these spiritual groups. Yeah. You know, there's money problems, there's physical problems, there's too much going on. So you, c you can't make it today. So don't go. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, so there is no time. Mm -hmm. There is no time. Uh, yeah, so exactly. Yeah. So, so there's always a reason not to come. Yes. Uh, oh. And uh, yeah. and but I also knew, like, you know, you, you know, I've done this intuitively from Hawkins. I know there's a group energy. You know, yeah. if I'm sitting, in, if I'm sitting in my room, my house has a group energy, has an energy field. Mm -hmm. Let's pretend my house is at the level of neutrality, and I'm if I do, if I I'm doing my spiritual work in an environment of neutrality. I'll do my observing and cancelling release, but the surrounding is neutra neutral. Okay, if I, do, if I go to a 12-step group, the 12-step group vibration is unconditional love. So I don't have to listen to anyone. I can be like going to the observer. I can be cancelling my personal beliefs. I can be doing, placing things into God's infinite light. But I'm placing things into God's infinite light and love and doing the observer in a surrounding environment of unconditional love, not neutrality in my home. So the power would be magnified there. If I'm in a Course in Miracles group where there's lots of advanced spiritual seekers and I cancel my beliefs and I practice the observer, I'll now be canceling my beliefs practicing the observer in a very, very high energy field because all these, all these people have been doing advanced spiritual work. The surrounding environment for me to do canceling beliefs will be magnified especially if we're doing group work together, uh, which we do in this group. So that's why actually, you know, if I'm going to do spiritual work, I'll choose the environment with the highest vibration to do my... So I live in 12-step groups, I live in Course in Miracles groups, and I do my work in those groups. And it's like, because I want to do that, now the universe is allowed, I don't have to, like, be in a, you know, a morning to late stock market career where I'm just like... Because it's like when you want that, the universe slowly gives it to you, in my experience, because something, just you have to transcend your karma. But, um, and you go up the levels of consciousness and things will change if you want that in your heart. But you can't, it's not like if you've got a lot of karma and you want to win the lottery and live in, in the Bahamas and do your observing, it's like you can't get there usually in one day because there's a lot of baggage you need to clear. And then suddenly it does, t those type of things tend to happen later on. In this country is Amazing for that, I have to say. For twelve step groups. Like I've been yeah. literally on the street, just getting out of my house and just praying around the block or just just being and I'll go like, Oh it's be great to um go to a twelve step group mm -hmm. today and I do a lot not as much as you, but I, I, I go Ooh. almost every day. And it's not the first time that I'll I'll just glance over this church and this twelve step group mm -hmm. happening and just go in. Yeah. And I sit down. Mm -hmm. it's amazing. Back home I, I don't have a way of Mm. Absolutely, and it's one of the reasons I, I, I love being in London, because mm. there's like, if I want to live in spiritual groups in London, non-stop, I can do that. How do you find out about these groups? Okay, Online? I'm, I'm great, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to actually talk about that now. Uh, and.